Achievement versus fulfillment. How are they alike? How are they different? And how are we pursuing each of them? That's what we're covering in today's Transformation Decoded. Hi and welcome. I'm Jackie Almer, one of the three founders of Transformation Decoded, and I'm thrilled today to bring my two counterparts on with me as always as we discuss achievement versus fulfillment and how those play out in our lives and our businesses. Um, so ladies, I'm going to jump right in and uh, ask you to introduce yourself and share first of all, if you were to define achievement, what does that mean to you? Isabel, I'm going to start with you. Hi, Isabel Banerjee, the Encore Catalyst. Well, I love this topic because as an entrepreneur, I'm always striving to achieve and doing and up-leveling and looking for the next accomplishment or tick it off. I'm the queen of lists and activities and um, often find myself just creating busy work for myself. I love that I am motivated to learn and continue to achieve, but that doesn't always make me feel full. Very good. Oh, mm -hmm. interesting. Nice play on words. All right, mm -hmm. Lee, achievement. Yeah, hi, I'm Lee Woodward, a woman in disguise, and I, this is interesting because I thought of more about it because of my Enneagram work that I've been doing, Jackie, oh, thank yes. you, where fulfillment is a really important part of me kind of being healthy, but yet I'm a very active and kind of achievement oriented person. And so to me, there's, um, for me, achievement seems to be more outwardly focused, like the things I'm to do and fulfillment is a little bit more about the being part, I guess. I think they, they go together, but sometimes, like Isabel alluded to, they can sometimes conflict with one another as well. Yes, and I'm Jackie Elmer, uh, CEO of Fun and Abundance at StreetSmartWealth.com. And I love this topic because as a three on the Enneagram, which I've referenced before, and the road back to you. Here's a book if you're interested in learning more about the Enneagram, and we'll be sharing more about that, certainly. But as a three, one of, I'm, the three is defined as achiever, performer. And as somebody who's come from the network marketing space for the last 26 years, it was probably about, honestly, about 10 years ago that I took a hard look at how we can set ourselves up for failure almost with the achievement versus fulfillment phase of things in network marketing specifically because it's always geared around that next rank that you're trying to achieve you accomplish you hit a goal you accomplish a rank and you move up the ladder so to speak and then looming right ahead of you is the next one and the goal of course is always to get to the top and i, I remember thinking about that way back when and thinking wow the 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 one thing that, well, there are many things that really bothered me about that when I, when I stopped to take a look at it, that I began to focus on is that if you're living in that mode, and I was at that time, it was impossible for me to be present. It was impossible for me to really be in the moment, savor the achievement, enjoy the fulfillment, which we'll get to, um, and, and not be constantly projecting everything into the future when I get to this, when I hit that goal, when I reach the top, all those different things. And, and I know, I mean, a lot of people say all three of us are based here in the United States. And a lot of people say that the United States is a three on the Enneagram and that it's all very, you know, achievement and success is based around your title and your income and so much of that. And I, I, I know I've spent a lot of my life caught up in that so it's interesting to take a look at those two different areas and kind of break that down. So a little bit of my experience with that. So Lee, I'm going to flip back to you because you, you know, brought up a good point with, with achievement being more outward focused. So then what does fulfillment mean and, and, and where do expectations yours or ex external expectations apply with any of that? 
Yeah, I mean, I think for me, when I say that, I think about fulfillment being, um, you know, just where regardless of what's going on, whether I achieve something or not, or hit that goal or didn't hit that goal, I think um, I still am figuring out how to feel fulfilled in that and, and how do I just kind of be. So to me, kind of what you're talking about, Jackie, about it, this being in the present moment, I guess for me, that's more tied to that fulfillment. When you can just say like, at this second, I have absolutely everything I need mm -hmm. just because I'm living, I'm breathing and I'm here. Right. So at this moment. And so I think that really hit me when you said that it's about being present. And I think the achievement side of that, I just think more, and they're not bad. It's not good or bad. I think we need both or I need both. I can become very restless if I'm off in either one. Uh, both of those can cause me to feel fairly restless. But I think achievement is just for me, it's more about that planning forward. And I think some of my great memories and things that I like to think back on, if I'm honest, aren't, are also based around achievements. So things that I think about that stick out to me from the past. So I think achievements definitely past in future and fulfillment's a little bit more about just right here and now. I like that. I like that a lot. Isabel. Well, it, it's, uh, I thought it was ironic. Um, you know, we're all talking about achievement and we're entrepreneurs and I'm wearing my, my intent bracelet that says, I am present to remind me to be present and, and enjoy and f the fulfillment of accomplishing something. And as you said, Lee, really appreciating what I have here and now, feeling um, grounded in the presence and who I am. Uh, I, I also thought it was very cool to think about memories that come to mind times in my life that I've felt the most joy and the most satisfaction and contentment um, those are not initially memories that come about having checked off a, an achievement box they are the satisfaction the fulfillment of a more internal uh, feeling like uh, the contentment of being with family or with very very dear friends or even just those moments of so savoring the smell of the air or the the feeling that you get when you see the sunrise in the morning um, so not to get too you know sappy and philosophical but it it that was um that was a nice reminder a little dig to say yeah first and most easily recalled memories are more about internal fulfillment yeah i like that and I know for me, just reflecting on, um, you know, past experiences too, and, and times when I hit a rank advancement or I achieved something and really not even taking the time to appreciate it, acknowledge it or anything, almost it was like, okay, great. Yay. Good for me. Next, next. Right, all right. Right, right. What do I, you know, what do I have to be doing? What, you know, what's my plan? What's all of that type thing? Um, and, and letting go of that has been a big thing. And, and I know also as I've evolved as a goal setter and an intention setter, I'm more about intentions of what I can do, what I intend to do, knowing that in doing those, my goals will come to pass in being more intentional with that whole process. I've learned to dig down deeper. It's kind of like the start with why, you know, Simon Sinek, his book, what is the why? And then digging down deeper and I never did this a lot as a coach and as a, a leader in network marketing specifically. I didn't do that very much for myself, but early on, I didn't do it for my team either to say, okay, so what, what happens when you hit, you know, a $10,000 month or a $20,000 month, or you achieve this goal? What, what is the difference? Because it's never about the money. We've talked about this before. Money is just an exchange of energy. That's all it is. It's what it allows us to, to do and put out there in different things. So having the cold hard cash in your hand means nothing, right? It really doesn't right. mean anything. So right. what what is the fulfillment you get? What does it allow you to do? What is that bigger mission or purpose or passion that you can fulfill with that? Uh, so I know for me, I've, I've really started to look at 
anything I'm pursuing in terms of achievement, why? What is the bigger, what is the bigger piece that leads me to that fulfillment? And that's really helped settle me in terms of not being so forward thinking, forward focused. And kind of like what you said, Lee, every day, you know, being present, being in gratitude and saying, I'm sufficient today. I have a roof over my head. I have food in the refrigerator. I have my air conditioning is running, thank goodness, because we're having a heat wave here in Arizona. Uh, you know, just different things like that. And saying, if I had all this other, what, what difference would it make right now today? What would that do for me? So that's been, you know, helpful things for me. What, um, what do you think about uh, achievement as an addiction? Is it, is it possible that we can run into that? And, and how, do we, how do we work within that? Isabel, any past experiences you might have to share? Um, absolutely. What's coming to mind is, um, as you know, um, my personal mantra is lift as you climb. And I've been doing some speaking around that uh, lately in terms of how that relates to women, professional women and business owners, um, sort of taking a look at that, you know, myth of work-life balance and really how our personal life and our professional life are integrated and that there is this exchange of energy. And in our professional life, you know, where we have to strive to achieve and, and constantly be, um, you know, checking off more boxes if we're going to stay competitive or if we're going to continue to, you know, sec have security in our position or our business um, and, and to be continually increasing the value that we can give. And, and that can be very difficult because then there's this, this this other part of us, our personal self that requires that fulfillment and, and nurturing. And so when I talk, I, I try to position this in terms of how, how do you set your professional goals uh, knowing that those are the means to the end to your per pers your personal goals and your personal fulfillment. It's not the other way around, right? First and foremost, it's your own personal um, inspiration, motivation, values, you know, your pri pri priorities. And then how do you use your business or your career to help you achieve those? That's nice. that's where my thoughts were going. Great. Lee? Yeah, I think it kind of ties back to our other episode on like self-development. When does that turn into, you know, something that's not positive? <laughs> right. And I think for me, um, and I'm thinking back on my own experience, uh, you know, when it would go cattywampus for me, um, and I become very achievement is when that became very disconnected from kind of Isabel to your point to who I am and what's important to me. And it just became about, about the goals. And, you know, and I can think back on, on being very early days of my career, um, you know, being very like the results what's matter, you know, if there was dead bodies on the side of the road. <laughs> so be it man it shouldn't have gotten my way you know I mean that was really mean but because there was just this result result get it yeah and luckily I like to think that I matured out of that very quickly and you know I'm seeing the downside to that but um you know so I think for me it's when it goes and I can even say things like, like I've said this before like with my running and everything and there are elements of those achievements where you know where it was, it became disconnected from what was good for me. And, um, and so it's just, I think it's about that balance, like Isabel said. And so for me, it's when it starts to get that why is not part of it. I don't really know why I'm doing it. I think it can become really addictive because I think we all have these little egos that love validation and we love to get that. I mean, and I don't think that makes us bad. I think it's what it's part of our human condition to love to get Addict, and I think we do get addicted to validation. And when we're looking outside for that, that's where in my life I've gotten kind of on that what I would call addictive achievement um, wheel. Yeah, well, I've definitely been there. I kind of already shared that, you know, in pursuit of things. And um, 
and, and I have, I've looked back and realized, A, you know, so many times I didn't even appreciate it. I almost didn't even acknowledge it. Um, and it, it wasn't fulfilling, not because the goal wasn't worthy or, or anything, but just because I didn't give it the weight that it needed. I, I was the one who really needed to, to provide the validation for myself and not need that external piece of it, you know, to, to kind of play out. And I've really worked at shifting that. So how then, um, Lee, are you, because I know we're all kind of at the, a very similar phase in life where we're, you know, we've all launched or are launching, do, you know, doing different things of, of purpose, of passion, of meaning in our business lives, as well as incorporating what that means to us in our personal life. So Lee, how are you incorporating that into the decisions that you make for where you're going to spend your time, who you're going to spend it with, and what those pursuits are going to be for you that provide achievement and fulfillment? Yeah, I've talked about this before that I'm really big into my cues. Like I have tells and I'm very much believe I feel things in my body and I kind of know when I feel on and I feel off. And when I'm off emotionally or integrity wise or anyway, there's, that's a very, um, I feel that. And so for me, I think it's about being honest and recognizing where I'm at and not saying I'm going to get stuck there, uh, but at least being truthful with myself saying, okay, this is, this is where I'm at. And, um, and I've recently told you guys that I've really been struggling with some of the motivation issues and I'm, I'm trying to pivot my business and all of this and rethinking it. And I realized that one of my challenges was that I was just being in my achievement oriented mind, my business was supposed to be number one. And what I realized was that no, right now for me, I just need to spend, you know, my first efforts and priorities on my family and some of the things that I will call personal. So I used to make personal to, you know, my actions for the week and my business and business was on top. And I've literally flipped those. And I've just said, I'm gonna think about this stuff first because that's what's feeling right for me right now. And so I, I think it's doing that, for me, it's doing that gut check and then being willing not to do what I just think I'm supposed to do because there's a story and we've had all the conversations about the stories that, that, that run in, in my head. Um, and we, I think we all have probably um, an epic dramas in there about uh, stories around achievement and what it means to us. So it's when to kind of flip those off for me. Love it. Isabel. I love that epic drama. <laughs> it's absolutely the movies that are going on in my head. Um, well, it you know, it's all interconnected and related and conversations we've had. You know, I think achievement is um, is like fuel there's gasoline coming from comparanoia and the imposter syndrome that we've talked about and and the pressure societally to keep up with everybody's perfect lives on instagram and facebook and this you know appearance of success and confidence and and I you know as um, you know if you've been in a, a position of of some uh, uh, public notoriety and then you step away from that coming back onto the stage is a terrifying thing is like oh my god you know can I do it again am I one hit wonder will they figure out I'm you know, making this up as I go along. So it is a really good thing to stop and think about, do I feel fulfilled? And is what I'm doing helping me achieve fulfillment? I'm going to have to think about that. Yeah, I love that. It, it reminded me of a TED talk that Elizabeth Gilbert has on, oh, yeah. um, you know, how her, her first big, her first book really and truly, you know, her, she had that big hit with Eat, Pray, Love. And then it was kind of like, oh, wow. Now all eyes are on her to do that again or better. And, and right. what does that do to our psyche in terms of thinking, do I just close down and not do anything again and just let that be my legacy? Or right. do I keep trying and maybe fall on my face and 
face the critics who are out there who are always super loud, especially now with social media when you can be anonymous almost. Right. Um, or, or do you adapt it more to, okay, I've had that big, nice, fabulous achievement and it was fulfilling. And now I'm going to focus on doing that work, putting things out there that do fulfill me. And if it achieves a certain level, that's fine. But I do think that when we come at something with our purpose, with our passion, and with knowing who and what we serve, I think it does put us out there to do great work. And even if it's not on a huge level, if we can impact one person ourselves, or we can impact one other person out there or, you know, make a difference and, and reach that, mm-hmm. what better fulfillment is there? Lee, I'd love to hear from you about the social media piece. That was one of the things that I wanted to bring up. And Isabel, I'm glad that you did. Like, how has social media um, made us aware of achievement, fulfillment, and measuring up? Yeah, it's interesting because I was actually just um, thinking about Facebook a lot. I had really been off of it for a while. So I will say that in general, um, most social media makes me feel completely unfulfilled is uh, <laughs> where I came at this morning. And, um, and I'm like, I don't know if this brings out the best in me and how I want to show up all the time. And it's tempting to act out of, um, I guess, what I would think is like my best self. Um, and so it's, um, if we could do a, I, I thought about this, that it makes me very reactive versus responsive. And um, so I'm really thinking about the difference between those two, those two things. So I think social media in general, it's, it, it makes it easy to react. And I just don't think that's coming from a place of um, intention, I guess. And what I typically find is when I act without intention, I usually regret it. We're not, not supposed to have regrets, whatever bullshit in my book. We have regrets. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and so for me, that's where I think for me that um, social media is just, it's more about reaction. And I don't think that's where I'm really at right now. That's not where I want to come from. And um, so that's kind of where I'm at on social media. I think there's a lot of pressure to react and kind of to have your voice heard. And, and so, and is that really achievement? Did I really achieve anything by commenting on that post? I really achieve anything in the moment. It feels like you have a platform. No, not really. <laughs> so that's kind of where I'm at. My, my true honest, because I was thinking about that this morning or just about social media in general. So that's kind of where I'm at. I love that you brought that into it. I, I guess, and I know I, I haven't used this word before, but now it kind of brings it around to anytime I make a post or a comment asking Am I going to feel fulfilled after this is done is in the way that I way. want to? You know what I mean? And, and I do kind of, I always, this is one of the things I coach on. If you even have to sort of ask yourself if you should be posting it, the answer is no. Right. <laughs> and that's something I've kind of lived by for the most part. Have yeah. I done that every single time? Absolutely not. But it is kind of funny because almost ever, well, honestly, every time really that I can think of, that I've asked myself that question and done it anyway, I do have regret. Yeah. I wish I could take it back. I wish I hadn't done it because it's like, you know what? It wasn't fulfilling for me. It wasn't how I wanted to show up as my best self and be remembered. Yeah. Or, you know, I always think about if I died tomorrow, would that be that person's last memory of me? <laughs> and what, what would that say? <laughs> so, yeah, I know. So social media, man, it, it it, it's crazy. And, and I think an important thing with that to, to begin to wrap things up with about the social media piece and achievement and fulfillment is most people put their A roll out on social media and things are not always what they seem. And so comparing ourselves to somebody else's perceived achievement is a, a recipe for disaster, really and truly, because you never know the story behind the story. And it really brings to mind three, and I won't name any of them, but three, um, two kind of celebrity marriages within their own right, not like actress, artist, celebrity, but fairly well known as influencers on social media. And then one that's in my 
space, home business, network marketing, all three that painted these rosy pictures of their life and how perfect everything was in their marriage. And now boom, marriage is over abruptly. This person is horrible. They've done this. They've closed off my bank account. Like, you know, all this stuff. And it's kind of like, yep. wow, things are not always what they seem. So just some thoughts on looking at other people's achievements and thinking that it should be something fulfilling you too. <laughs> Isabel, any final thoughts to wrap up with? I just I think it's really important to remember the illusionary part of of that. It used to be, I think, simpler that I knew that I'll leave it to Beaver and um, Happy Days. They were fictional programs, but now we're exposed to people's real lives and we're making comparisons of our, our own to that. So it, it, it completely supports what we talked about, achievement versus fulfillment, which one should be on the top, right? So just got to do my best to remember that as I decide to tackle my next achievement. Very good. Lee? Yeah, I mean, I think probably as well, you kind of mentioned it before, I think when I think my happiest moments, it's when there's been alignment between what makes me feel fulfilled and my achievements that I that I go after. And that um, they just really mesh together. And I think when those two things mesh, you know, it's energy, it's momentum, um, and it's like this in integrity and Jackie to your point I think that just fuels us like that what makes me excited about life and so I think it's worth figuring out that balance although I don't think it ever is a snap of the finger <laughs> yeah it, it I agree it's I mean if, if life were only that simple right if life were only that simple but there would be no growth if we didn't have those right phases of, of life because we only grow during struggle. We don't grow during the good times. Mm -hmm. So we have to revisit the struggle kind of regularly to keep growing and, and that's okay. But yeah, so um, hopefully this, you know, you've all gotten some value out of this. I hope we'd love to hear your comments. We'd love to hear your thoughts on achievement versus fulfillment, maybe areas that you've grown in, areas that you've struggled in. You know, you can leave any comments below you can find us on our Facebook page, Transformation Decoded, and um, let us know what you'd like to hear about. All right. Have an awesome day. Bye, everyone. Bye.